Frame rate in CSGO can be really choppy sometimes. So today I'm gonna go over some tips that you could use both in game and out of game to fix your FPS. Last time I did an FPS test was many months ago, but I was actually only averaging about 150. And after doing all the stuff I'll show you guys in this video, I'm now at 270. So I'll get into how you can check your average frame rate at the end of the video, but I haven't gone through any PC changes or anything. So 120 frame rate gain is pretty insane. So real quick, if you are in the 85% of people that watch my videos and still aren't subscribed, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my CSGO content. But for now, let's get right into the video. So first of all, I'm going to start with the main thing that really seemed to help my game feel a lot smoother. And it's actually a problem that a lot of people don't even think about. So my PC and a lot of your guys as well probably have a C and D drive or two different drives at least. And a lot of things tend to just default to installing on your C drive. So as you can see with mine, I only have like 10 gigs of free space on it. There's not a lot of stuff and I keep all my videos on there and all that. So all of that just defaults to my C drive. So up until recently, I had the entirety of Steam and all of my games on there as well. And as you could see, it only had 12 gigs free of space compared compared to my D drive. So just a few days ago, I moved Steam over to my D drive, which has over 250 gigs of free space. So after moving Steam from my C drive, which barely has any space to my D drive, which has a ton of space, my game felt much, much better instantly. If both of these drives on your PC have a lot of space, this shouldn't be an issue, but if one has a lot more than the other, I would recommend completely deleting Steam on one, then going to the Steam page, making sure you install it on your other drive, which has a lot of more space. And this is actually going to delete all your games. And for me, it also set all my settings in game to default as well. So just keep that in mind, but I can practically guarantee results judging by how positively this affect me. Like when I went into a deathmatch with a ton of different people in it, I usually get like 100 FPS just because my PC isn't that great, but it felt just a lot smoother. It felt like I could actually deathmatch with the server with like 18 people in it. And in competitive, it felt great as well. So I really recommend doing this and just making sure CSGO is not a drive that is just completely full in space. Second of all, let's go over some launch options. These don't seem to have as big of an effect on FPS, but if you're on a lower end PC, you might definitely see a difference. And I'll show you where to enter all these after going over all the commands, starting with plus CL underscore force preload one. This command preloads maps before you get in game, and it might have some slight effects on FPS, but nothing too major. Plus FPS underscore max zero will make it so your FPS isn't capped at a certain value, even if you don't reach the max that the FPS is set at by default, which I believe is 300, but from my many years of using this command and what I've seen from other people, I think Simple in his stream said yesterday that it made this game feel a lot smoother as well. I really recommend it and it's not going to hurt you and probably will give you a slight boost. And then finally, Minus High will run the game on high priority mode compared to other things you have open. Once again, you might see some slight results, but nothing too huge. But I recommend testing all of these out if you are on a lower end PC. These are really the only three settings that are going to have a noticeable performance, I feel. There's tons of guides out there with like 20 different launch option settings that you don't really need. I feel like these are the three main ones that really affect your FPS in game, so I do recommend trying them out. You can also enter all these by going to your Steam library, right clicking on CS, properties, and then just putting them in the launch options bar, and you're completely good. You could just close out and they will automatically be launched as you go in game. So next, let's go over some actual in-game settings. These ones are pretty straightforward and should just look how I have them right now. Most importantly, you should just have your model texture detail, global shadow quality, effect detail, and shader detail on low. They will probably have the biggest effect on your FPS and the game still looks completely fine with all of them on low. It is what I play on and I also play on a stretch resolution, 1280 by 1024. But considering I get 270 FPS in native 16x9, 1920 by 1080 why would I play in a lower res? Well, first of all, I played on a garbage PC when I started this game so I was just used to how low resolutions feel and when I got my good PC which I'm on now. I just stayed on the same res. It just felt good to me, it feels smooth, and I get better frame rates. So if you're not getting above like 100 or 150 FPS and you're playing on native, I really recommend lowering your resolution. 
When I had a bad PC years ago, I played on 640 by 480 just to make my game run at like above 60 FPS. And I'm not saying you need to do that because that PC was actual garbage, but not only does the game feel much better in my opinion on lower resolutions, a lot of pros play on it as well. So it's a great thing to try out. You aren't going to be some weird outlier if you do it. But if you do change your res though, you are going to be met with black bars. So to fix that and make your game full screen stretched, if you're on an NVIDIA graphics card, just right click on your desktop, go to adjust desktop size and position, and from there, set it to full screen. And while you're there, if you have a monitor that's capable of getting above 60 hertz, make sure it's set to the highest it can be. A lot of you probably don't have this because these monitors tend to be expensive, but as someone that was on 60 hertz for many years and just switched over to 144 hertz probably a year or so ago, the change is really incredible and I do recommend it if you have the money. CSGO and literally everything else on your PC feels 100 times smoother, but that is not an issue with frame rate, so let's get on past that. So just some final things to get into, which can actually have a much bigger effect on your FPS than you may think. First of all, have as little of stuff as possible open when playing CS, especially Google Chrome. Google Chrome really causes a big performance tank if you do have it open in CS because it just eats away at your RAM, so definitely leave it closed. You probably don't need it open when you're in-game anyway, but if you're in Discord, there's really not a noticeable decrease unless you're streaming a game in a server or have someone stream open. If you're just in a call, you shouldn't notice anything too much, but if you do go into settings, then appearance and scroll to the bottom, turning off hardware acceleration can lower frame drops, which CSGO is pretty notorious for and I still get them from time to time so this might offer some slight help and actually let me know because I didn't know this setting existed until about 30 minutes ago so we'll see how it does but the rest of the stuff in this video should help you a lot more with FPS this might help you a bit with frame drops but also make sure you're offline steam those pesky I guess you could say friend notifications that show up every few seconds really seem to not correlate well with your FPS. They cause mine to dip a lot and they're flat out just annoying honestly. So going offline Steam or just turning off your friend notification settings so they don't pop up when you're in game can help your FPS as well. But yeah, overall, I think that is all the stuff that's going to notably affect your game's FPS. You should definitely see results if you do follow everything in this video. I mean, I did, especially with moving Steam over to a different drive, like the difference was honestly insane. But there's also a workshop map called FPS Benchmark, which I'll link at the top of the description, which puts you through a sort of an obstacle course that pushes your game to the limit and gives you a good idea of your average FPS throughout a match. You can also type CL underscore show FPS one in-game console to show yourself how many frames you're getting in real time. But besides all that, I think that does cover everything that I wanted to go over in this video, so be sure to leave a like and subscribe if this video did help you out. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.